No matter where you are, you are standing in a watershed. Our homes, work, where we grow our food and where we play, all exist in watersheds. A watershed is an area of land that drains to a common point such as a lake, river, or marsh. Watersheds can range in size from a few acres to thousands of square miles. The continental United States is divided into 18 major drainage basins. For instance, the Mississippi River Basin is very large and is composed of other smaller basins that in turn include thousands of still smaller watersheds. The upper Midwest states, including Iowa, ultimately drain into the Mississippi. More than 80% of the land in Iowa is managed for agriculture. Iowa ranks one and two in sources of excess nitrogen and phosphorus in the Mississippi. High levels of nitrogen and phosphorus in water produce harmful algal blooms. These blooms can produce dead zones in water bodies where dissolved oxygen levels are so low that most aquatic life cannot survive. This condition is referred to as hypoxia, a growing problem found in the Gulf of Mexico. Levels of nitrogen and phosphorus are not only problems in the Gulf, they are a problem here in Iowa. Des Moines Water Works has one of the largest nitrate removing systems in the world. Our watersheds provide water for drinking, agriculture production, irrigation and industry. Lakes and streams are settings for outdoor activities and recreation. Healthy watersheds provide food and shelter for a diversity of plants and animals. The best way to protect our vital natural resources is to understand and manage them on a watershed basis. For instance, the Heartland Water Coordination Initiative partners the land-grant universities in Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, and Missouri with the USDA and the EPA to increase the capacity of local stakeholders to better address regional water quality concerns. Projects like Heartland recognize that human activities and natural events within one watershed affect the whole water system. In the past, many water quality problems were traced to the most obvious cause, point source pollution. Pollution that comes from a specific location, such as a pipe or disposal site. Water quality problems from non-point sources are more diffuse and difficult to control. Non-point source pollution can be high levels of nitrogen and phosphorus, pesticides, herbicides, pharmaceuticals, high bacteria levels, or from failing septic systems, parking lots, construction sites, irrigation and drainage systems, even automobile exhaust. Non-point source pollutants are in the water that runs off livestock paddocks, crop and forest lands. These pollutants evaporate into the atmosphere and return to earth with rain and snow. The Iowa Department of Natural Resources has teamed with local volunteers to monitor streams and rivers throughout the state. Consistent monitoring will identify any problems. But the origin of these pollutants often is hard to trace, difficult to measure, and result from a variety of human and animal activities combined with natural events such as precipitation and drought. Partnerships among all who live, work, and play in a watershed can help identify concerns, educate, and encourage action. Lake Darling in Washington County, Iowa is a cleaner lake as a result of the hard work of many landowners, groups, and agencies. Since 2001, over 100 targeted conservation projects have reduced the sediment going into the lake by 3,500 tons per year. Put 3,500 tons of soil in dump trucks and you'd have a line of trucks more than a mile long. Effective watershed management focuses on preventing pollution. This is easier and cheaper than trying to clean up a lake or stream after it has become polluted. 
There are many innovative grassroots activities that protect water and other natural resources in the Midwest. However, more work is needed. Successful projects offer lessons on how to make our watersheds healthier. Know the flow of the water. How large is your watershed? Where does it flow and drain? What are the natural boundaries? Slow the flow of water. The areas nearest lakes, rivers, and streams have the biggest effects on water quality. A natural ecological system contains grass and tree filters, buffer strips, ponds, wetlands and riparian areas providing wildlife habitat that absorbs excess nutrients and ties up sediment to naturally cleanse the water. Wetlands can also reduce heavy peak flows of water, reducing flooding. Many aquatic organisms and wildlife species rely on wetlands for rearing their young, for food, and for shelter. Understand your watershed usage. What are the land uses and water needs of cities and industries? What are the farm uses? Are there places used for fishing, swimming, hunting, boating, or bird watching? Know that land uses and management change over time. Economic or social choices also have environmental impacts. Because we all have a place in a watershed, we have different expectations for use and protection, which can lead to conflicts over issues such as livestock manure disposal, new housing, business expansion, pesticide application, and varying types of conservation practices. Know your neighbors. Encourage them to learn with you about your watershed. Everyone, not just landowners, benefit from healthy watersheds. Be willing to try new practices and new ways of managing land. Together, we can build a culture of conservation through shared beliefs, experiences, and the science of watershed ecology. Our watersheds are dynamic and unique places. They are complex webs of natural resources, soil, water, air, plants, animals, and people. All living organisms have a place in the watershed. It is our responsibility to secure its ecological and economic health for all generations.